indebted to each and every one of you for your time and your participation here today. And of course, our host and presenter, Melissa Armo. So with, uh, with, with that, let me see if I can round up the uh, percussion section. Drummers, are you ready? <laughs> And with that, according to my iPhone, it is exactly 4.30. Please put your hands together and welcome our host and presenter today from the Stockswish.com. Thank you so much, Online Trader Central. Welcome, everyone. Can you hear me? Let me know if the sound is good. Let me know if you can see the red slide. Great. Wonderful. Good to be here with everybody. So today we're gonna to talk about how to earn a six-figure salary using advanced technical analysis. And there's many, many different ways to trade. Some people look at fundamentals, some people look at technicals. I am basically a chartist. I look at charts and I read the price in charts when I'm determining what stocks to trade. And you can also use my method for ETFs or, or even like the overall market. And I did predict the move that the market has made higher and is continuing higher based on my system, which we're going to talk about today. So I don't read any fundamentals at all. Uh, many times I will look to see if a stock has had an earnings report. And one of the, the stocks we're going to talk about in today's lecture is something from last week. It was Lulu. And it was an earnings report, but I don't read what the, what the earnings report says. I don't read if it came out good or bad or whatever. So I'm really just looking at the price. And so you can make money just using technical analysis, but you have to have a method to do it. And so we're going to talk today about doing it and how you can pay yourself and how you can do this if you want to do it for a living even as your full-time job. The one nice thing about trading is that it's not full-time hours. There are some days, though, that I may take a late afternoon trade, but for the most part, I am trading just in the morning between 9.30 and 10. And I'm on the East Coast. I'm in New York. So it depends where you are in the world. That's the time when you want to be able to trade. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at the And you can go follow me, specifically on YouTube. I have a lot of of uh, videos on YouTube for you to follow me. So let's get right into it. The fact is that a lot of money exists in the stock market. This is just something that everyone knows. But for some reason, traders or regular everyday people, individuals, people that I talk to a lot, I've had my educational business now for more than four years, feel like it's not within their reach. But you only need such a small, tiny, tiny, tiny piece of that to even make $100,000 a year or two hundred grand a year. Even as one individual, it's like a dot. It's like a speck, even to make six figures a year of the amount of money that exists in the market. So for some of you ha who have problems overcoming th this idea about making a living trading, think about it as the market as a whole and the billions and billions of dollars that flow through the market every day. And then, then you can grasp the concept and the, the idea what, that you can do this and that it's still such a small, small portion of the money that's going in and out of the market every single day. So the fact is that you can make money in the market trading stocks by buying or shorting them. And, and I prefer to short, which we'll talk about later too. But I will sometimes go long. As an individual trader, you can access capital by trading with leverage, which you would, you would get at a broker where you open your account. So you don't have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to trade, okay? That's the nice thing about leverage or buying power that you get from brokers. This leverage can assist you in making substantial profits just like professional traders who have, you know, huge amounts of money and are trading. And you've got to learn how to trade like them or get in positions that they are in with them. The key is learning how to trade like a professional so that you can just ride the coattails of the moves that those professional traders are making because professional traders are taking really big positions in stocks and they are moving them. And the one we're going to talk about today is Lulu, which had a huge move last week and it was to the downside. So becoming substantially successful in the market is possible. And it's even possible as you as one individual. And the idea of even making six figures is it possible as you as one individual. Because if you look at the bigger picture, it's a speck of the money that exists and flows through the market. 
So hopefully that will help some of you overcome these mental challenges that you have about seeing the money. Because you do kind of have to be able to see the money, to manifest it, to believe that it's possible, to do the work necessary to, to get it, to do it, to take the trades and to learn it. One major difference between a so-so trader though and a great trader is that great traders are absolute masters at technical analysis. An elevated degree of comprehension and reading price action is required for success. And we're going to talk about that today in a lesson. If you do not know how to read charts in a sophisticated manner, then it's time to learn. And once you do, you will begin to see the potential that all the market has to offer by seeing a detail in price action that you never even knew was possible. You know, a lot of us are out there and we can pull up charts and we're going to look at some charts today from anywhere. You can get charts off of freestockcharts.com, but it's not going to be live, live price. Here, I'll just put this in the room um, because this is a good little site here that just has free charts, but it's not live price action. Like a, you need a live level two for that, but it's, it's, it's a pretty current. And anyways, you can go there and you can look at charts. So we could all see what the stock is, is trading at, Apple, Netflix, whatever you want to look at. And most of us have cell phones or iPhones and we can see what the price of a stock is trading at. But it's where it's going to go next so that you know where to take the trade because that's how you're going to make the money. Okay, but we all see the price of something when it's trading and we can all get pretty pretty accurate data information pretty much real time from anywhere that we look. So people that are masters at trading have an advanced skill set and this is what I have. It's I've been trading for more than eight years now. The skill that I have and, and what you'd come if you came to learn from me is how to read stock charts in technical analysis and in an advanced way. And the reason this is so important is to make significant money in the market. You have to be able to track or read the pattern or the footprint of large money investing or withdrawing. When, when these big institutions, these big banks, hedge funds, when they either buy a stock and invest money in it or they sell it, their positions and take money out and withdraw it. And that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm predicting or forecasting before I take my trades. So this is where the advanced skill set lies in learning how to forecast the direction of price through the study of past and current market data. And that's why you need to have you know, a chart and a live level two to see what is happening and what did happen in the past. So you put the odds highly in your favor when you trade on the side of this large institutional money. And I never trade against this. All the trades that I'm looking at are with this, which is one of the reasons why when I take a trade, it usually goes right into the money. Whether I do options trades or whether I do day trades, they usually go right profitable. And you could quick it out or some of them you could hold for longer. It's up to you. But like I said, I like to be in and out of the day trades early in a couple of minutes. Now, how can you tell where the side of the large money is on? You learn an advanced way to read price patterns and charts. So, you know, again, common sense is that people go to school when they're serious about doing well and they want to learn something. They will go and they will learn it. If you wanted to become a doctor or an attorney um, or a nurse, you would have to go to school and you would learn how to do it. It's easy to say, I get people to say, Melissa, can you refer me a good book I can read? You know, I can't really say one specific book that I can tell you to read that will teach you what you need to know about how to make money in the market. You can learn certain different things about chart reading. There's different candlestick books out there. Uh, there's a good book by Steve Neeson. It's called Japanese Candlesticks. It's very dry, uh, but that book is a good candlestick knowledge book, but it's not gonna teach you how to make money using the technical analysis. So you'll learn different things about charts what's on a chart, but you're not going to learn how to use that information to make money. And obviously that's what counts. Hey there. Hi everyone. So people are saying hi to me. If you just signed in late, we, you didn't miss that much. We're just getting going here. So the point is if you're serious, which you must be in order to make six figures a year, then you've got to learn what to do. Okay. So it's important to make the time to learn how to trade on the higher level. And what do I mean by that? I'm, I'm going to show you here in, in a second a chart that someone else is charting in a minute. But you've got to focus on learning what to do. And if you're able to do that, then the money naturally will come. We're going to talk today also about an option call. I just called very quickly today, got in and got right out. And it's not even at the strike. And it was 100% return on investment that you could do in one day. Uh, and that was an option trade. 
For those of you that are subscribed to my YouTube, you can go to this video. I talk about the trade so far this year in 2017, but I have a win ratio of 82%. So if you want to make money and you want to make six figures a year, you've got to have a system that you learn that has a high win ratio. If you have a good system and implement it daily, you can make money. It is based on common sense that you need more winners than losers in order to profit trading. So a high win ratio system is very important if you want to make money, especially enough to earn a living trading. Okay, so you would you would receive if you came to trade with me in my trading room and did my class, you would obtain an advanced education and technical analysis. And I have not written a book yet. I've thought about it. It takes a lot of time to write a good book. I would never write a book and slap it together, but I've thought about it. But the, the system that I do, I created myself, so it isn't out there in any book until I write my own book. But you can learn little tidbits here and there from different books about how to read charts or candlesticks, like I said, but you're not going to learn the advanced education. And particularly what I'm going to go over here is the certain, certain thing that I'm looking for in my charts when I'm looking for it. What I'm looking for when I look at a chart, this is a daily chart and I squish these bars together. They're very, very small. I'm went all the way back now two years. Okay. This is, I know this is small, but this is uh, late 2014, early 2015. And I wanted to show you a chart of the ETFs or the QQQs. Okay. What I'm looking for when I'm reading a chart and this is the, the advanced method I'm looking for is I'm looking to see who is in control of the price action. Now, how do I determine that? I look for the gaps in the chart. Now you can use this for stocks or you can use this for ETFs. Now the, again, these are very, very small, but you can still see them. We're going to go over what a gap is just very briefly here. Some of you know, some of you don't, but a gap is when the closing price at four o'clock is at a different price than in the morning at 930 when the stock or the market opens. In this case here, the market gap down. Now this is very, very small, but you can still see it. Okay. Then it gap down again here. Then it gap down again here. Then it had the drop off and it fell. This is even a gap down here. Then it gapped up. This gap up here that happened in February, 2016. Okay. We're going back now more than a year. Take it across, take it across, take it across has, again, I'm looking at the price. Okay. Go over, over, over this gap up in the QQQs has held. Okay. See this here. So here we are. This is today or it was whatever time I clipped this. So this is today. Here we are March or April of 2017. This was February, 2016. We have held this price level in the QQQs all along. So if you bought this gap up in the queues, and this could be anything, anything at all, but it's a, it's, it's a QQQs. If you bought this, you were still up and you were up every day for the last year plus. And you've, when the markets had a nice run. So if you bought around this hundred dollar price point level, the market's up around 131 ish. So this was a gap up boom that happened stock or the market closed here at four o'clock and then it gapped up, opened here at a different price. This gap has held and we've taken off. Okay. So who is in control of this market? It's the bulls. Okay. Now, how do I know? Because I'm looking for the gaps. Now, as I said over here, this was a bearish gap. This is a bullish gap. This was a bearish gap. There's different gaps. Here you have a bearish gap. Here you have a bearish gap. Here you have a bullish gap. So the market gaps a lot more than stocks do actually, but I have a method to rate these gaps to determine like you could have rated this one here. It was a bearish gap there. Who's in control. If you know who's in control, that's how you can profit because you will take the trade of the side of the control. And in this case here, if you had rated this gap as a bullish gap, as a long, you could have been in this for the last year as a swing trade or some kind of option trade and you would be up and you would have never been down any second ever since more than a year. Okay. So the control here is to the upside of the market. And I did predict that. Oh, here, I blew this up a little bit, but you can't see the one back here. Actually, here's another one here. Here's another one here. This is July. The market gapped up 
Again, my system focuses on gaps. So the advanced part of what I do in the technical analysis, looking at the charts and looking at the price is the price of the gap. I'm looking at the gaps. So the price of the gaps, and that's how I am doing the price forecasting and saying this is gonna go here. So here you have it, this gapped up here, this was July, boom, shot up straight. This was before even the election. Now going back over here, where was the election day? Oh, here was the election day here in November, and the market took off after that as well, okay? So you've got to train your brain to read price action, and what if you came and learned from me, you would learn how to read gaps to train your brain to read the buying and selling, whether it was going to come in that day, whether it was going to enter, whether it was going to exit, whether they're going to buy it, whether they're going to sell it, whether they're going to short it, whether it's new money or whether it's covering. Okay, for example, sometimes we have a gap down and it goes green and it's short covering, but it's not really buying. Okay, these are the things that you would learn reading the charts, being in the class with me. And, and this is what I do well. I've trained my brain to read this. Now, here was today's trade, option trade in Google. I called Google calls. Okay, Google had a gap. Google opened, rallied. I called Google calls this afternoon to buy 845 strike, which it's not even out yet. Okay, expiring out a week. And today, if you had done this trade, it was more than 100% return on investment. If you got in and got out. Now, it still could go higher, but if you can take money and be in and out and flip it around in a day, that's a very, very profitable trade, okay? So again, going back to the high odd system, you get in, you're up, you get out. You take the trade, you're up, you get out. This is how you will meet your goal. If your goal is to make, and I'm just saying $100,000 a year, but obviously you can make way more than that trading, you know. But if your goal is just to make 100 grand a year trading, your average weekly goal would be $2,500 a week, okay? So how do you make those goals? And we'll talk about this more at the end. You chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. $500 here, $1,000 here. And you don't trade when there's no, when there's no good trades. Now I'm gonna go over this, this Google contract or the, the Google position here, or the Google call from today. So if you had bought, and again, you can do any quantity you want, okay? Again, how did I figure this out? I forecasted the price. This is going to go to 845 in the next week, okay? But you could have taken this and got in and out today, which I did, and made more than 100%. You don't need to get it through the strike. Um, and the only, I didn't do any trades today but Google. So I didn't do any shorts today. I'm going over this right now. I was just talking in general about the market, just explaining the market chart that I didn't do any trades today in the market, okay? This is the trade from today, Ange. So this isn't tiny, and this isn't tiny either. I was trying to show you the overall market, and I know it was tiny, but you got the point of what I was trying to say. Anyways, if you bought the Google contracts today, depending on where you got in, the cost was anywhere between one something and two something, depending on the time of the day in the afternoon. And this was an afternoon trade, not a morning trade. It was cheaper in the morning. If you had bought 10 contracts, which was 1,000 shares of Google today at a 2.1 cost, okay, it would have cost you $2,000. You didn't have to buy that many. You could have bought five and spent 1,000. Okay, you could have bought one and spent 200 bucks. Either way, the trade's the same. So the Google today had more than 100% return on investment if you were in and you were out and it's not even at the strike. So do you see how you're making money? I'm gonna go back to the chart, getting the buying, the institutional buying, I'm reading the price action in the gap and I'm getting the institutional buying and I'm playing it through. I'm just playing it through. I don't even need to get it to the strike or through the strike. I'm making money as it's going. Do, 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 okay? No, I did do the Google today. Is this not clear? I did Google today as an option trade, not as a day trade for equity position. It's an option. I'm going over the trade right here, okay? 
If you don't understand this, I'll break it down again. 10 Google contracts today cost $2, which would be 2,000. That's what you would have spent, okay? You could still be in this though. It had an expiration date out till next week, but I got in and got out, but that was my decision. And the reason is because what? Good return on investment. So you could have taken 10 contracts today and sold it for 450. So at a cost of $2, your profits what? $2.50. Could you make more? Yes. If it goes through the striker to the striker carries through in the next week, you will make more. But this is what I'm talking about. You get in and you get out. Boom. So this was 2,500 bucks in one day. If your goal is to make $10,000 in a month, I have, I have bigger goals than that. But either way, if this is just your goal, you could have done this and just made it in one day your goal for the week. Okay. So yes, I did do this and got out of it today. It does look higher. It does look great. It's got a week left. It could make a new high. It could go $10 through the strike. The strike's 845. It's not there. It's, it's almost, it's getting there. So I predicted that this would go like this today and go there. And so I did an option trade. This is different from a day trade. Now, I'm still using technical analysis. I'm still using my system. I'm still looking at institutional buying or selling. Same principle, same concept in the gap, okay? The, my ability to be able to predict that is based on advanced technical analysis reading the gaps. So the nice thing about doing options is that some days, like this morning, there wasn't any good day trades in the morning between 9.30 and 10, so I didn't do any. So you can do an option trade sometimes on those days, and you don't have to worry about buying power because this is an expensive stock to trade. No, you can, you can do this in stocks. You can do this in ETFs, okay? Anything that gaps, you could do it, all right? It has to have a gap. And here I just clipped this quick before we got out so you could see here what the 845s were worth. But they looked great, okay? It looked amazing. Anyways, traders who make six figures a year are masters at reading charts. And this is what I do. So if you want to do this, it's possible because again, even $2,500 in one trade is just a small, small speck of all the money that exists in the market. Now here's another one. I want to look at, this is Target, okay? This was a couple of weeks ago. You look at this and you say, well, where's Target going to go? How do you make the prediction? What can we do with this? Well, let's take a look at the chart. The stock closed here. This is way back here at the end of February. Then the stock had a gap. This is what I do. I analyze gaps and make the predictions according to the gap. So this in here, I actually did do, or we called in the room in here, and it was a loss, okay? It was a loss in here. I think that was the day that Galahad was here, actually. This failed. So everybody in the room took a loss in this one. And then I called an option put, and then it worked. Fell, fell off a cliff, okay? So this fell all the way down, 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 and it worked with puts that I called for 57 and 58 puts, and it went through the strike. So sometimes there will be a day trade that doesn't work as a day trade and that works as a swing trade or an option. So then you go back after it for that. Again, my, my prediction was the target was lower. So sometimes on the day, it won't work out and you will take a loss. Remember, I said I have an 80% win ratio. That means if you take 10 trades, you should expect that two will fail and, 10, and eight will work of the 10. So you will take some losses. In this case here, the day trade and target was a loss. And then everybody that did the option made money in the put. Okay. Uh, what made me get out of the trade today of the Google? Andrew's asking about this. Because the market has not hit up over the high yet. It could have today. It hasn't. It looks good to do it. I still think it probably does in the next week. But you lose time value every day. And, and, and I mean, when something is 100% return on investment that you take on the same day, that's real money. If Here, put another zero. Put another zero here, people. If I took 
and I'm just going to make my point. I did this last week in the trading room. If I took 10,000, 10,000 shares, I didn't, but what if I did? The cost would have been, well, I would have been 200, yeah, it would have been 200 contracts. Is that right? Yeah. So if I had taken 200 contracts, or no, 100 contracts, I'm sorry. I'm thinking 20,000 I'm 20, or something. If I had taken 100 contracts, it would have been 10,000 shares times $2. That's what I was thinking too. Equals, this is the cost. So if I, I'm just saying add another zero, okay? I didn't take that many. But a $2 cost times 10,000 shares, which is 100 contracts, would have been what? $20,000. Are you telling me that if you would have been up $25,000, profit that you wouldn't have gotten out I would have gotten out <laughs> so I mean it's about the accuracy and then plopping on the size to really make the money when you can get to that point where you're seeing things you know as clearly as I do I mean this is where I'm headed so we talked about this last week in the room and I used an even bigger example of profit but I mean, honestly, are you telling me if you were up twenty-five thousand dollars and a twenty grand on at risk, you'd, you'd you'd follow that through overnight, not knowing? I mean, the market could gap down tomorrow. Who knows what could happen? It could pull back. It looks good. I'm sure that it's higher, but you don't know hundred percent. You know you did the trade. You know you're up. You know you just turned it around more than hundred percent return on investment. You know you just took twenty grand in a couple of hours. You made twenty-five. Boom. So you add another zero on. That's real money, people. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, could it follow through? Yes. Am I out of it? Yes. Okay. And $2,500 is $2,500. Now, let's get back to Target, okay? So, my system predicts where things are going to go. My trading system uses technical analysis to forecast and predict where stock will go, either up or down, when it gaps. And that's what I do. But first, I wait for the gap, all right? I get the gap. Then I make the prediction, okay? My system has about an 80% win ratio, which means that for every 10 trades, you should expect eight to be winners and two to be losers on average. This is a high probability system. I'm looking for the gap to work with the direction of the gap if it rates over 20 points. So I have a checklist I use every day to rate gaps based on a 26 point system. It doesn't need to have a perfect score. It needs to have 20 or more to get it. It is a strategic system that uses advanced technical analysis to take trades to make money in the market. You can use a system for day trading, swing trading your options. And I just showed you the option example, but we're going to go over the day trade in Lulu here in a minute. Now, for those of you, again, some of you signed in late, but just to review again, what is technical analysis? If you've never traded before and you're brand new, it's looking at charts. It's looking at price action, current and past. Technical analysis is a trading tool employed to evaluate securities and attempt to forecast their future movement by analyzing statistics gathered from trading activity, such as price movement and volume. Unlike fundamental analysts who attempt to evaluate a security's intrinsic value, technical analysts, which is me, that, that is really what I do, focus on charts of price movement and various analytical tools to evaluate a security's strength or weakness and forecast future price changes. And the way I'm doing it, though, is in gaps. So here was the Google. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. I wrote this wrong. It's Amazon. That's my bad. This was actually uh, Amazon from last week. This one I called. I didn't do it. This was a huge, huge trade that happened last week. I did another option trade that I called for people in the letter. It worked, and this just took off like a rocket. So I called the 860. This isn't, this isn't Google, just so you know. It's Amazon. I was messed up in the title. I called the 860s. I called it this day. The second day after, it went to 875. So you could have done this in here, and then by the end of the week, it all went all the way up to the dream target of 890. So again, this is an option trade. If you had done it, it went $30 over the strike with no time value at all. This was another huge, huge trade. I gave two dates on this one, Friday last week, expiring and Friday this week expiring or what which was Thursday I mean the 13th because of the holiday 
Um, or no, it was the seventh. Yeah, I did it the seventh. I didn't do it to the thirteenth. I did the uh, to the Google's app to the thirteenth. Anyways, this was in here. You could have gotten out of it on March thirty first. So you focus on being a professional when you're taking trades. Again, when you get in, you get out when you're up. You take the trade, you see the move. Here's the buying in this. Gapped up, ran, gapped up, big move. Gapped up the next day, held, gapped up again. Took off like a rocket, gapped up again. So this again was Amazon. I have the wrong name up here, but every day last week it gapped up. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so you're playing this move. You're playing the move and you're getting it up. And, 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 and you know, that's the kind of thing that I predict. This was, this, was a, this was a huge call. This was a huge call, but I had stuff going on last week. And the exit really in this would have been here in the afternoon or even in here. So you, you, some of these exits you have to watch. You have to be sitting at your desk. Today I happen to be at my desk. Or you call, you can call and email your broker to get you out of the trade. So you focus on being a professional, which is what's the information? What's the price telling you? Now I pulled this off of another place. I'm, I'm not going to say where it is, but I wanted to go over this because I shorted Lulu last week. Okay. This is a completely different place. Some video I pulled it off of somebody online that was talking about buying Lulu. In fact, in the video, they bought Lulu when the post market, when the earnings came out. They killed the trade, it was a loss, and they were looking to rebuy Lulu at a $50 level. I don't know what these indicators are in here. They're just some kind of trend lines that the person had on the chart. But there's a fallacy out there that indicators are really the way to trade, and you look at trend lines, and that there's some kind of consistent reliability in them that you can take trades into support or resistance if you're shorting stuff to consistently make money. People really use indicators like this person on this chart to make decisions of what to do. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work consistently to make money. If there was something like that, we'd all buy it and we'd all have it and it wouldn't work. And they don't work, okay? So I don't use any of these things. And it's a fallacy that these things work and that you can make profitable trading decisions based on them. It's a tool like anything else, but it's not the reason you take the trade. And Lulu isn't a buy at $50 and, and it's a, it would be a horrible buy at $50. And I'm going to go over this in a minute here. But People are probably long it because it held 50-50 last Friday. That was a low. It held and it bounced, but it's heading to break it. It's heading to break it even today, okay? So a lot of traders out there think, and this, this looks very sophisticated here when you look at this, all the fancy lines, but there's no sophistication in it. This is just a computer that put these lines on here. The person that's using this isn't using their brain at all. And I use my brain when I make trading decisions, okay, based on what the price is doing, not based on what some line that a computer made in the chart is telling me. And I'll explain why in a minute. Are you talking about, are you, Google was today, we'll go over it when I'm done, but this thing here, this isn't Google. I screwed up here in the title, this was Amazon. This was a call for last week. I can pull up the Google, Google was today. Actually, I called Google last week too, but uh, there was another Google one today. But I, if this was a screw up here on my part, it's actually Amazon. I had too many charts and I was rushing at the end. We can go over the Google trade from today if you want, but I don't know if that's what you mean or do you mean Amazon? Because I screwed up here on the title, Mark. Do you mean this chart here, which is Amazon from last week, or do you mean the Google today? If we don't have time before the end here, I'll do a video when we're done. Just mark, just tell me which one you mean. Today's one or last week's Amazon? Okay. All right. Well, if we don't have time, I'll do a video and post it on YouTube at the end. Anyways, okay. Backtrack to what I was saying here. So another trading room was buying, okay, or looking to buy and was in long and then killed it, the Lulu last week that I was looking to short per my system, okay? Seeing that it was gonna have institutional selling, okay? So many, many traders out there think that they are acting like professionals by using these kinds of fancy lines because this looks very sophisticated, but it's really just not even using your brain at all, not even really thinking about what's actually happening, okay? 
You don't want to be with what most people are doing that are day traders. You want to be with the professional traders, people that are trading big, big size and moving stocks. And you have to focus on the right info for that. And, and I know, it, it, you know you, you're used to doing something, you might be used to having charts like that, you might be used to having all kinds of different indicators like that that you've relied on for years, but you've got to motivate yourself to learn something new because you, know, you wouldn't be here otherwise if whatever you were doing was making gobbles and gobbles and hordes of money. So a lot of times people kind of have to get out of the rut that they're in thinking that certain things that they're looking at like trend lines and stuff works when it doesn't. This, what I do is based on a system. It's a checklist. I look at the gap and I use advanced technical analysis to do it. And that checklist is what I use every morning before I take the trade. And in something like today, I might see an option trade later in as the day goes. But I don't do option trades every day, people. I do the day trades every day. Once in a while, a couple times a month, I see the options. So you got to think of yourself like if you were in charge of, you know, going into surgery, or even if you were like a pilot, you have a checklist, you have a list of things to do. Check it, check it, check it, check it. Does it meet all these criteria? If it does, you're clear for takeoff. You can do it. If it doesn't, you can't take the trade, all right? Like I said this morning, there was no shorts. There was no day trades in the morning. There was no good shorts. There was no good longs in the morning for day trades. And I don't, I don't, you know, I don't day trade Google or Amazon to take a trade with the, you know, a position to put a stop. It's just very expensive and the stops are big. But options is different because you only risk the cost. Okay, you don't have stops. But anyways, I'm in charge of what I do when I trade. And the checklist points me there, okay? And that's how you know what to do it. That's how you make the money. Traders who are making money are using a certain skill set and it's not based on lines on a chart like I showed you. Which, which looks very fancy, but really tells you absolutely nothing. So you've got to learn a special language. The language that's in the charts, like if you went to learn Spanish or Portuguese or whatever, or French, okay? You learn the language in charts, and that's what you learn from me, and it's based on the gap. It's really the language of gaps, which is something that I'm extremely good at. And... I watched that video that pr that other person did. They went on and on about how the gap in Lulu was going to fill. And the gap in Lulu is not going to fill anytime soon. I'm not saying it never fills, but it's not going to fill anytime soon. So you've got to look at things in a very professional manner. Now, here was another, this was this whole video. I clipped this too. There was, there's absolutely no system here to what this person was doing, other than the fact that we're looking at these lines and determining that this prior support here at $50, okay, was a buy for Lulu. I, who knows what, it, I don't even know what all these lines are. But anyways, this person's making trading decision based on these lines, wanting to buy Lulu into the $50 area. This, that's not a system at all. They're making a decision based on these trend lines. And this looks like a planetary solar system to me. It looks like it would give me a headache if I even had to look at it every day. <laughs> I wouldn't even want to look at this. But this person isn't trading using a system. They're just using these lines. Okay, you can't make real serious money, which six figures a year is without a system. Now, here's Lulu. And again, I know I had the cues really small. I had the Lulu really small here. And the reason I did it is for a reason. This was today. Here's this. This is the same chart as this chart. This is this chart here. This is the same chart here, except for mine looks much cleaner. Okay. That place, that trading room, whatever, you know, is looking to buy Lulu at $50 still. So here's the $50 level. Take it across, take it across, take it across. Here was the gap that I shorted last week, which worked. And we're going to go over that day trade. Okay. Now go over. Is Would anyone here want to buy Lulu? Looking at my chart with all, without all this crap on it. And I'm just, without even knowing anything, with anything at all, what would you think? Ange keeps talking about Google. We'll, if we, we'll go back to that at the end. Just stay with me with the Lulu here. I don't want to run out of time, Ange. Or we'll, I'll do a video on it when we're done because uh, Mark asked about it too. Everybody's getting excited about Google now. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have talked about that at the beginning. 
Stay with me here on the Lulu. Would anyone want to buy Lulu at $50? Looking at this chart here, would you? Hello? Anyone, anyone at all? No one has an opinion? You can just write in the room. Tim says not yet. That's an honest answer. Galahad said, not me. Tim says, not yet. Well, Tim, where would you, since Tim's the only one that answered, you know, besides Galahad, who's a ready student. Tim, where would you buy this Lulu? It has not hit the $50 level. Where would you, where would you buy it? Jean says, not yet. Oh, Tim, you're saying no, you wouldn't rush it at all? Are you, it's, NY yet is Russian for no? Oh, sorry, I didn't know that I don't speak Russian. So you're saying you wouldn't buy it at all? Okay, good. 35, you'd buy it at 35. Oh, Tim would buy it at 35. <laughs> That's a new number. Hold on, let's find it. Here. Tim would buy it here. I wouldn't buy it there either, okay? I wouldn't buy it there and I wouldn't buy it at 50 and this this person's trend lines would look even look even way different if it trades all the way down to 35. This planetary solar system chart here would look way different than that. And 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 if I pulled this up again, this isn't my chart, it's somebody else's I just clipped. You probably down here is around that $35, $36 area, which you can kind of see in here. That's pretty much the support. The point I'm trying to make is that there's a million supports in Lulu, just like there's a million resistance levels in Lulu. How do you know, how can you predict which one is going to hold and which one isn't? So Tim's saying, oh, I don't think 50 is going to hold, but I think 35 is going to hold. And somebody else said the same thing and just saying 35 looks good too. But how do you know 35 is going to hold? How do you know? How do you know? This guy thought 50 was going to hold. Now you guys think 35 is going to hold. How do you know? Is that an accurate prediction? So do you see what I'm saying? The idea of using certain indicators or buying supports and shorting resistance is not a system or a strategy itself. Right, Tim's being honest. He's saying, I don't know. And just saying it's support. But $50 was a support. And $50 will be broken. I'm telling you right now it will be. How do you know that $35 will, will hold? You don't, okay? The point is that when you're looking to trade, in order to make money, you have to have a very high level of, I call it conviction, okay? That's what I call it when I teach and I talk in the room. You have to have a very high level of conviction that something's going to hold a certain number or go to a certain number or take off if you're going long it or sell off if you're short it. You have to have a certain level of conviction. It can't just be like, well, it could hold here or maybe here or maybe here or maybe here. When I take a trade, I have 100% conviction that it's going to uh, where was Google? 8.45 in the next week. Now whether I stay in it or not till there, it doesn't matter if I'm up. That's my own money management decision. But I have 100% conviction it's going there. Okay? That's the target. So getting back to the Lulu, okay, where was I? This is the daily chart here of Lulu, and this was, the, it looked better then, it broke 51 than today as the day went on, okay? This was the day of the gap last week on Thursday. Here's Friday, here's the bounce. This is going to fall through, break the low, and keep going, and break and go down to 50 and break it. That's my prediction. Let's see if I'm right. I know that I will be. So this is not maybe, or is it going to do this, or is it going to do that? I'm telling you, it's going to break it. The red line is the 200 period moving average. So this is what I do. I'm forecasting. I'm predicting that this will happen, like I predicted the Google today. I want to show you something here. Again, going back into the chart reading. i got to watch my time here because I want to go over the day trade, and it's already 515. 
uh, this is a weekly chart. It's a weekly chart of Lulu. When you look at this, you think, holy crap, look at that bar. This is a weekly chart of Lulu. It was last week. If you look at this, that looks like a scary monster. If you're long the stock in Lulu, I don't care where you're long it. That's a scary monster bar if you're long. That doesn't look like something that I want to be long. That's a scary bar if you're long. It's a beautiful bar if you're short. Okay. So again, common sense. That's a weekly bar, by the way, people. Okay. And this includes the gap because the gap happened Thursday. So this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, last week's trading. Okay. That's the whole week. That includes the gap happened. Look at where this opened here to start the week last week. 63, it rallied up to 66 something and it closed the week at what? 50 something. Uh-uh. You can't convince me to buy this at 50 or 35. Now let's go here and look at this. Here's the Lulu. This was the day trade. It was a good short. Stock open rally. Boom, 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 boom. And again, this is what I do in the mornings. If you want to day trade with me, it's in the morning between 9.30 and 10. So here's 9.30, here's 10. And this trade did actually keep going. Okay, I missed the exit here in the morning in this last week. It fell more. I did not get it all the way down to the low, which was 50.50, but I did get it to 51. This low in here was around 51.30. So I held it through a pushback till it dropped. But I, it was, I had computer problems, so I missed the exit here. But I did end up making a little bit more money. Anyways, here was the entry. And then it pushed down and it ended up breaking. So it did hit, hit, hit the target, which was 51. The dream target was 50. It got within 50 cents of it. It just fell into, it ran out of day. If you wanted to do, again, enough risk to make 100 grand a year day trading my system, okay? I use this risk here, 480, around 500 bucks. You could have taken 800 shares. Stop with 60 cents. That's the risk. You could have made $1,200. So again, if your goal is 2,500 bucks a week, you made half your goal for the week in this one trade. This is a very good trade. We're talking about return on investment for the options. This is a risk to reward. So for every dollar you risked into Lulu, last week in that trade, you made 2.5. And actually, if you held it all the way down to the low and to the close, you could have made three. All right? Now, if you're trading, you know, and good and doing well and want to take an advanced risk, which, which is how I trade now because I've been doing this for so long. 3,000 shares was an $1,800 risk in the Lulu. At 51, how much money would you have made? 4,500 bucks. So I did this trade last week. This was an amazing trade, and this pretty much made my week. It was a slow week last week. I didn't do the Amazon because I had stuff to do in the afternoon, and then it went. I mean, it went so quickly that I didn't want to chase it, even though it kept going. So this Lulu really made my week last week and I had absolutely no losers. So do you see? So you, you, you don't even need to be doing like a million trades a day. I do one trade a day. Maybe I do one day trade. Maybe I do one option if I know I'm going to be around to watch it. I do one trade, one focus, one pick a day. This, this trade could have made your whole week last week no matter how much your risk was. Okay? And it's a short just to, just to, just to reiterate that. Again, you don't have to take some massive size. If you've got a small account, say you only have two grand in an account, then just risk a small amount. $180 risk in this was 300 shares. You could have made 450 bucks. That's still a really good amount of money for this risk, okay? So that was the day trade in Lulu. Now, people always ask me, how much time does this take to do the system? For day trading gaps, the time of the day is from about 9.30 to 10 a.m. Eastern time. You only need to trade for 30 minutes daily, really for the day trades, because 80% of the moves happen into the open. And Lulu did go to 51.30 in that first 30 minutes. If you held it down into the afternoon, you got about 80 cents more out of it. For doing options trades, there's not a set time per day. It's whenever, whenever they set up. Could be in the morning, could be in the open, could be around 10 o'clock, could be 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's when you see a good gap trade. Are you, and I have a letter subscription. If you just want to sign up for the gap letter subscription for the option letter, you get them emailed to you. I'll talk about that at the end. But really, to be able to maximize my system, you would do the day trades, you would do the options trades, you use the system to make money doing everything you can that gaps, whether up or down. 
but in the morning you really need to give yourself a good half hour before the open and then a good half hour into the open to trade so from 9 to 10 you got to be sitting at your desk really if you want to do the day trades the options trades you just get them emailed to you now how much money do you need to risk to make six figures a year and again it depends what broker you go to some people are at retail houses and you can trade anywhere as long as you have day trade charts with pre-market and post-market data a one minute chart and a level two if you have a small amount of money then you can go to a proprietary day trading firm they will sometimes give you leverage 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 okay a hundred thousand dollars in buying power though is enough to really make this kind of money because most of the stocks I trade and this is the day trades are between five dollars about 65 bucks like I told you I don't I'm not taking day trading positions in Google or Amazon so if you go to a prop place you've got to be flat every day by four o'clock I am going to have a proprietary firm talk and and have a webinar it's going to be Thursday of this week at 11 o'clock if you're interested in that email me you can come for free and listen to that lecture if you don't know what a proprietary day trading firm is like you'll learn about it on Thursday now what are some realistic goals for you again we talked about this if your goal is to make twenty five hundred dollars a week then you chunk it out you save 500 bucks a day you're risking four to five hundred a trade some days though you won't have any trades some days you will take a loss like I said it's an 80 percent win ratio system and some days you will make more than you risk just like in the Lulu if you had risked 500 bucks in the Lulu this was the first one here you would have made two and a half times the amount on that day and your goal for the day was only 500 do you see so on average that's how you're looking at it and that's how you put together a week but you can have a lot of losses that's why I don't take a lot of trades either if you take trade after trade after trade after trade if I get up in the morning and I take a trade and it's a loser the best thing for you to do is to stop knowing that the next day you'll get a good one you can take a good one the next day every once in a while I will do a later trade if I see a good gap or an afternoon setup or maybe an option but not always the discipline that you that you need to have is knowing that you will get a good one the next day and having the confidence in in the system itself to give you good trades last week I did call three options on the one day on the Wednesday they all worked and there was a day trade that day and then there was a day trade the next day so you just never know I can't I can't predict when the stocks are gonna get I can just predict when they get where they're gonna go okay any questions as I'm going along here ask me now so I teach a class my class is called the Golden Gap course it is a full two-day course on how to strategically find pick and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps retakes are free the class is online why would you come from me and take the course if you want to learn a strategy that offers stocks that move and have momentum and to learn how to trade gaps which I'm very good at doing and to learn a consistent and profitable strategy that you can use for day trading swing trading and option trading and how to pick which symbol just one symbol a day to do to trade which really condenses your losses and helps you really bank the money because once you take a trade and you're up even if you're up you should just stop okay also you learn how to enter the stock and determine the targets and you learn how to read charts and price action on advanced level because it's because of my ability to be read gaps that I can predict these things but it's all in the price of the how the stocks moving like I could see the Google's going to that number like I could see the target was going to that number like I could see that Amazon was going to that number okay so in my class you would learn the 26 point rating system in the Golden Gap course and it can be used to rate stocks to play intraday which is what I like to do I have the most fun doing because I like being in trades you know and out fast I mean I really do and and I and I'm realizing more and more that I like to be out of the options fast too even though sometimes they go they go further for a couple of days it, it's less stress when you're in and you're up right away and you're out and 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 you can't you can't lose money if you take off profit so the 26 point rating system can be used to choose a stock to take as a swing or core trade and one of the reasons why my class is so unique is because the system can be used in multiple ways this is very unique most uh, trading systems out there you can only use for this thing or that thing or this thing you can use this on any time frame that's very unique short or long term so if you can't be in the trading room every day you can use it for swing trades or option trades if you can be in there every morning then you get the advantage of doing everything okay how is it possible 
to be able to use one system for multiple time frames because I'm looking at an institutional money. And that's what I'm telling you, Lulu's lower. And people are going to buy that dip in there when it goes to a certain number and they're going to, it's going to go right through it. Okay? So this is the reason why my class is valuable because you can use it in multiple times on a Google in the brain. Anyways, I use a 26 point checklist. That's what I do. And that's how I find the trades. So quality is so important in trading. If you want to be profitable, then quality matters. It matters because if you want to trade with size, you will need to have precise entries and quality picks. Master traders read charts with a precision that is required for large profits. And once you start learning how to read charts in a more detailed manner, you will immediately see a difference in your results. Having detail in your trading gives you an edge, okay? And you've got to mirror the professionals, which all that means is really you're getting the trades, the same trades that they're doing. When you see a professional gap, you want to take it. And that's why the idea of going long Lulu is so ridiculous, okay? So if you come and take my class, you will learn technical analysis. You will learn how to read the institutional money. And this is how you can make money trading. And I honestly don't believe there's any other way to do it because using all those different trend lines and different indicators, you're back and forth, back and forth, and you don't have the consistency and your account shows it and it reflects in it. And you've got to be able to pay yourself. And the more you have green days, the more confidence you get, which is one of the reasons I'm a very confident trader. Any questions as we're going along here? Anyways, very lastly here, my system is really based on common sense. The money you can make trading in the market is substantial. Many people fail to make money or don't make enough money trading because they simply don't use common sense. Like the chart I showed you earlier with the indicators. If every indicator worked, we would all buy them and there's no such thing. Simply using common sense price analysis to predict buying and selling action by using gas will get you the money you desire. The idea of having a system that is advanced is that you're looking for many things in the gap when you're analyzing it and rating it. But the rationale behind the system is quite simple which is that you're looking for institutional buying or selling and who's controlling the stock. So when you learn the system, you're, you're looking at it in an advanced way that is complex because you're looking at 26 things, which is a lot, but the rationale behind it and why it works is actually very simple and based on common sense. So the whole point of today's lecture is that if you want to become a professional, whether you're doing this for a living or whether you're doing it part-time, you still have to take it seriously. And I always say to people, how committed are you? How motivated are you? How badly do you want it? And, you know, there's plenty of time left in the year. I mean, just eight more months left in the year. Earnings season starts in two weeks. You know, all these stocks I talked about today, Google, which I talked about <laughs> the whole webinar, and Amazon, all these things are going to have earnings in the month of April, okay? So there's going to be a lot of money to be made, and you just have to kind of open up your mind and I hope the things that I said earlier made sense if you're wrestling in your brain with this concept of you know how can I possibly make a hundred grand a year it's a dot in the amount of money that actually exists in the market so how I do it is my rating system it's a complete system to help you make money trading so the class is this weekend Saturday and Sunday April 8th and 9th from 9 to 5 Eastern time cost of the class is $49.99 email me at melissa at the stockswish.com if you would like to sign up uh, the sign-up sheets are not on the website. You have to email me for that. And it's really about having the right knowledge. And that's how you make the money. I'm offering the Wealth Manifestation class free for anyone that signs up for the course this weekend. That class is next week on Thursday the 13th, right before the Easter holiday. Time of the class is from 12 to 3 Eastern time. Cost is $3.99. If you're interested in this, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Okay? And you will get this class for free. So the deadline to sign up is Friday. For those of you that are interested in the options letter, um, you just get the trades emailed to you. I only have an annual subscription for this, no prerequisites. There's a prerequisite to be in the day trading room, which is you have to take the gap class. If you want to sign up for the letter, you can just sign up for it. It's $29.99 per year. You can email me, but you're not going to learn the system. So the best thing is for you to learn the system and do the options letter as well and be in the room to, you know, to get all the opportunity there. It's just whether or not, you know, you have the time to do the day trading or to do the, um, the options trading. Um, yeah, Kathy actually, thank you. Kathy actually did do the wealth manifestation class. I think Kathy and Karen did it. Does anyone have any questions where we went over here in time? I will do, I will do a video on the Google uh, tonight, right afterwards for everybody. 
because I talked about Google on every chart today. <laughs> I almost said Google when I was talking about Lulu, except for Lulu looks like a piece of crap. So it was kind of hard to know it wasn't Google. <laughs> Any questions from anyone? Tim now has Google in the brain, I know. It still looks good. It's going to need the market to continue, though, tomorrow. I didn't see how the market closed. I'll do a market video, too. Listen, if you'd like a trial of the room, email me at melissathestockswish.com. Uh, you can use your chart. You can use your, if you have a day trading charts, yes, you can use charts. You can use your own charts. You can use whatever charts you want, as long as they have data that's current, post and pre-market data, day, day charts, and you need a one-minute chart. Okie doke. If you have any more questions, email me. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, all in Trader Central.